Today, we are going to get creative with watercolors, um, painting two things I don't think I've ever drawn together, mushrooms and isopods. <laughs> Why should we combine these two subjects? I have absolutely no clue. But maybe more importantly, I'm going to be working on colorful gradients in watercolor. How we can achieve some nice transitions and depth of color. And I'm going to walk through some design choices uh, that requires a very painful step of erasing an element I really, really like. <laughs> all in the name of art, creativity, and all that jazz. I've wanted to give more attention to my backgrounds and settings. In the past, I've often relied on the subject of the art to do the, the heavy lifting of providing a feeling or emotion, and not always successfully, I might add. I noticed that I could do uh, some very simple backgrounds and how it would bring out some sort of emotion without being so direct, and I like that. For this first piece, I wanted to create something with a bit of a weird, magical, maybe light-hearted sort of feel. Uh, and in this case, I think the sky particularly helps to get a lot of that across. When I want a soft feeling sky, I'm going to usually do two things. I'm going to work with wet paper, uh, kind of the wet on wet style, and I'm going to build up in layers. Working wet allows the paint to diffuse more and will help give those soft transitions. In this case, I did a very light wash of light blue uh, to wet the paper where I wanted the sky. And I introduced other colors like the geranium red and the oriolan yellow. If I wanted a more realistic sky color, I think cerulean blue is probably one of the better choices for a blue sky. Uh, but in this case, I didn't want realistic colors. I wanted something that was a bit strange. So in this painting, I'm keeping the distinct colors a bit separated, and I'll just mix them a bit in the middle. In the end, I think I love the colors of the sky, the soft purple and magenta, and this lovely green at the top. Now, green skies are not typically a good thing, uh, but in an imaginary mushroom forest, I think it might be perfect. And it sets a mood, pretty much Anything we put in front of this purple and green sky is going to be a little bit magical, I think. And it's relatively dark, so to me it feels like an evening or nighttime setting. And uh, things are slow and cool and relaxed. And you can see, in addition to the sky and its many coloredness, I'm painting hints of other mushrooms in this mushroom forest. You notice, too, that I'm painting directly over the sky. Uh, I'll paint those mushrooms in medium washes of purple, and I'll let the sky colors come right through there. Now, I'm doing this for two reasons. One is, it's just way easier to do that. Um, but also, it makes those elements feel part of the background and aren't going to demand lots and lots of attention. In my next painting, I will do the sky in a different way, but with some similar techniques, uh, and I'll get to that in a little bit. My work in the foreground kind of got lost because I wasn't positioned correctly under the camera, but I wanted to add that you can use some of the colors from the sky uh, as a light wash uh, in the foreground too, especially in this case where you have the horizon line. You can sort of feather in the sky into the horizon a bit that way. I'm using a similar layering technique on the mushroom cap here, using layers of paint on the paper, drying them, and then washing another color on top. This, I think, brings some depth to the colors. You'll see these orange and brownish hues that will kind of come through uh, beneath that eventual darker purple color that it will be. And it almost lends a bit of a woody or meaty sort of feel to this mushroom. It's a little bit more organic. Uh, so I think that works out pretty well. I do think about where the colors are on a color wheel, making good use of color opposites and analogous colors. For instance, the cap of this mushroom with its 
purples. Uh, that fits in nicely with the sky. But the pink underside, you know, that's right where this greenish sky would be. So that element will definitely grab some attention. In fact, in the end, I think maybe it grabs a little bit too much. Um, in retrospect, I think I should have reflected some of that pink onto the mushroom's face. And I think that would have worked out really well and kind of tied that together a little bit more and given a little bit more weight to uh, the face of this mushroom. But you'll notice that I'm not using really strong like primary colors, you know, big, bold reds and greens for the most part, uh, because I wanted this to be a little bit calmer. Um, I didn't intend to, but I did use more forceful use of opposites on the other two main characters. A little red ladybug on the bright, you know, greenish yellow leaf and uh, the blue and orange isopod, which I haven't filled in yet, but you'll see it. I know I didn't consciously decide to do this, but I know why I did. I wanted them to be noticed and they're so small and they needed to visually compete a little bit with this big old mushroom head guy. <laughs> and I could have toned these down a bit um, in the end. And I think it still would have worked, but you know, it's, it's hard to say. Um, I do like the bright green leaves, though. I think um, it, it just brings uh, some highlights to them, and I think I like the overall feel of this. A bit mysterious and strange, but in a good, happy, and maybe even trippy sort of way. The mushroom forest full of friends. <laughs> and moving on to my next thing. I had two people ask about some composition choices I made last week on a couple of these pieces here that I did. And I noticed that I had a hard time putting those choices into words because I'm usually reacting to something that's been drawn or I'm just having a feeling and working things out intuitively. And when I saw that uh, I wanted to make a change to my initial sketch this one right here for uh, another drawing, I thought, well, this is a good opportunity to try to explain why. Content wise, I can't tell you why my brain came up with these mushrooms growing out of an isopod shell. I can't speak to that part. Uh, but very typically, I drew this main part away from the center of the page. Um, people refer this to the, as the rule of thirds which honestly does not mean take out a ruler and find where the one third lines are. It's more like not in the center, not on the side. Um, and by the way, putting something in the center is not a bad design choice, depending on what you're going for. But anyway, uh, I had these things developed on this side and I wanted to balance it out with some stuff on the other side. So I drew isopod number two, which helped, uh, but I had a couple problems with it. One, isopod number two was basically in the same position as isopod number one. I didn't like that. Uh, seemed less natural, I guess. Um, plus just two, well, that just feels a little bit off. We tend to like odd numbers of things. Three is better than two or four, <laughs> usually. So I drew in a number three isopod in the back, um, slightly different angle, and, uh, and I think that, that helped quite a bit. But looking at this compositionally, I still had some problems, and I think it was because uh, the focus is here, 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 and here. It's kind of like a square. And squares in natural settings, especially when they're linear like this, uh, can look a little bit static. And so I gave it some thought and I want to make it a little bit more triangular, a little bit more movement. Uh, so <laughs> unfortunately, I thought, no, I have to erase this part right here. Um, this nice, beautiful, little twisted sort of uh, mushroom. And it pains me. <laughs> But I think that in the end, we'll have the focus here and uh, and in those two areas. And so we have 
I think a little bit more balance overall compositionally. So as painful as it is to erase that element, I do think it's the right call. It does open up a big gap in the sky here um, in the upper right, so I'll need to consider how I will deal with that. Now, of course, these are just aesthetic choices and the ones I think will work best in my case. Uh, there is not a right or wrong way to do this. And you know what? You may completely disagree with me. And actually, I welcome that 100%. Actually, I'd be really excited to hear from you if you have a differing view because, hey, you know, I'm still learning. I do not have everything figured out. So, um a lot of times I feel these things out and see what they look like and I may get to the end and think, oh, that was that was not the best choice. And then next time I'll change it. But I think uh, after doing this, I think that this was the right choice. And I'm going to do a similar sky as the last one, but I'm going to add some clouds to fill in that space in the upper right. And so I'm doing wet on wet with this ruby geranium up to an orange and then kind of blotting out where some of the clouds would be. Uh, after that dried, you can see I'm adding some more orange and kind of outlining the tops of the clouds. And you'll see I'll kind of diffuse the bottoms a little bit. And this will give a, a pretty realistic sort of uh, cloud look. I'm going to go with this more dramatic use of color, though, since this picture is you know, again, kind of fantasy. And this is the step I think really brings this, the skyscape together. And it's this wash of yellow. This kind of ties the color so they look like they belong to each other. Um, kind of gives it an overall sort of hue and haze. And I think that's really effective on this and makes those clouds, um, I don't know, seem a little bit more realistic, almost like you could touch them. And I hinted at it on the last drawing, but one way to transition from a sky uh, into the horizon line is to um, to paint on both with, uh, with one color. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some purple. Um, I'm going to paint in a mountain range kind of in the background, but also uh, bring that purple down into the foreground. And this again kind of ties everything together, makes the colors a little bit more harmonious throughout. Uh, and I think generally that, you know, tends to be pretty effective. And then by using different layers of colors on um, the foreground, you can see, you know, still get some greens and blues and some a little bit more interesting colors there. Like the mushroom forest painting, I'm thinking a lot about the use of color. This is another pretty playful piece, so I'm using brighter um, and bolder colors, and I'm making sure that the main elements pop by, for instance, placing these blue mushrooms in front of the orange sky. Uh, the isopods will be yellowish orange, and they'll run in front of the purple mountains and the horizon line. And um, there'll be pops of color in the, in the foreground, the greens. And, and I think this will help to bring the eye down to the lower third where most of the action is. Plus, I didn't like the feel of the desert that I was getting here. So I wanted to add some lushness. Neither mushrooms nor isopods would do well in the desert. They both are quite moisture loving in their own ways. And by the way, isopods are commonly known as pill bugs or roly polies. At least that's what we always used to call them, roly polies. Uh, wood lice is another name. And there are zillions of varieties of them. I am not kidding. Some are quite simple, uh, brown or black, and they'll kind of roll up in a ball <laughs> if you touch them. Uh, but some have gorgeous colors and people actually collect them as pets. I did not know that until very recently. Uh, and like mushrooms, they are crucial to the ecosystem as decomposters. Uh, they break down dead organic matter. Um, plus, they're just kind of cool, you know? Uh, to me, I see they're almost like teeny tiny little armadillos. 
like these ancient creatures that seem just a little bit out of place in our modern fleshly world. So, I don't know, maybe the mushroom and the isopod pairing makes perfect sense. Both have been around for a long, long time and kind of do the work that no one else wants to do. Very lowly, but also quite noble. Although it was painful to erase my initial tall, twisty mushroom, I think I do like the looks of this final piece. Uh, the composition, I think, balances pretty well, and the colors? Well, they make it a bit dreamy, otherworldly. Where are they off to? Is this a migration pattern? Is it some sort of symbiotic relationship? The sci-fi world needs to write a book and let me know. <laughs> Oh, and just a note, since you made it to the end of the video, I ordered some Lloyd Cicada Dobbler stickers from my drawings last week. I'll have details on how you can get your grubby little hands on one. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by, and we'll catch you next week. Bye-bye.